What's going on, Boston Celtics fans? We want to hear from you guys. Right in between on this Saturday, in between Game 1 and Game 2, I want to hear what Celtics Today subscribers thought about that Game 1 performance and also looking ahead into Game 2 because we're going to post our keys to victory and our Game 2 preview tomorrow morning. But first things first, let's see how we all collectively feel as a whole, shall we? Oh, my goodness. Smitty's burner is back and ready. <laughs> and shout out to his uh, graduation picture from St. Bonaventure. Will Porzingis play a better game in the series than he did game one? This was a huge question in Smitty and I's conversations and also in our chat sports conversations because there was some higher power working with and through Chris Stapps Porzingis in that first half of his redemption game coming back from his injury. I want to say yes because I want to say that that wasn't all adrenaline. It was definitely all, it was a lot of talent. I just don't see Chris Stapps Porzingis coming off that. I mean, that was probably the best game of his career. That was an electric way to come back from an injury and to start your game one of the NBA Finals. But I do think there was a lot of adrenaline in that situation. I do think that there were a lot of just trying to prove to yourself and trying to prove to the Boston Celtics that you can do this and you are 110% and then being fueled by a sold-out arena in TD Garden. I don't know if the circumstances will ever lead back up to that ball game, but in terms of talent, the blocking, the three-point shots, the aggressiveness, we've seen that all season long. So I do think we'll continue to see that. But in this trajectory, maybe not. But here's why you guys subscribe to Celtics Today by Chat Sports. We're live for every single Celtics game this postseason. We had 300,000 people tuned in for game one. And we're going to see how many we can get here for game two as well. We also gained over 1,000 subscribers during game one. Thank you guys so much for the jobs not finished, just like the Boston Celtics. Continue to hit that sub button for me, and let's get into it. A main man, 93 nav man, that is, saying hashtag Celtics. I think Missoula has improved a thousand percent over last year. He has his team's attention now. Agree? A hundred percent. A hundred percent agree. And I will be fully transparent. I think Joe Missoula still has a long way to go to be a successful head coach in the NBA. And I do think what he's done this year is successful, but you're also given the utensils and the resources to be successful. So, I think that Joe Missoula has my respect. Missoula Ball, I am fully on that train. But I do think if you want that stamp of approval of respect from not only the Boston Celtics, but from your team, you go out and you win Banner 18. Because you have to think, that team last year was not his team. It was Ime Udoka's. It was handed to Joe Missoula about a week before the season started. So, I do think that Joe Mazzula has fully crafted himself. And let me tell you, he does some wacky things in practice, but it seems to work, and I like it. Dick, what do you have to say, my man? Hashtag Celtics, what adjustments can the Mavs make? I personally think Gafford and Lively are going to get played off the court due to bad matchups. I do agree with this, but I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I, I wouldn't give Gafford a bad matchup because he was on Tatum, and I do think that is one of the reasons why. Tatum was locked up in the first half. And if you look back at the preview, if you look back at the game, he was double teamed the entire time. There was one play where Tatum started to drive down low, was double teamed by Gafford and Luka, and you can just see Jalen Brown and, Der and Derek White completely wide open on those corners, allowing Tatum to facilitate the basketball. Do I think Derek Lively will have five fouls again? No. Do I think Gafford still has a lot more offensively that he can do? Absolutely. I do think we will see several different Dallas Mavericks make a difference in the game, too. But adjustments, I just think offensively, they need to be in a better rhythm. I think Kyrie Irving cannot leave Luka alone to carry the team. I don't think they'll thrive that way. And honestly, if they have the resources, then you are going to need somebody to come off the bench and really provide that spark the way that Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard do for the Boston Celtics. Or else, you're right, it could be a bad matchup for the Dallas Mavericks. Oscar P, 24, coming out. Do you think KP should continue coming off the bench for the rest of the finals? Ooh. Um, no, no. No, I don't. Okay, so I'm here now. I think Chris S. Porzingis should start. I think Al Horford has done phenomenal, but I do think that in this matchup against the Mavericks, Chris S. Porzingis playing his former team, 
He obviously knows the system a little bit better. I would I would start Chris Stapps, and I would go back to what was working the entire regular season, and that's Al Horford coming off the bench in that first rotation instead of Porzingis coming off the bench for Al Horford. I love Big Al, but he is 38 years old. You, put, you, you got Tingis for this reason, and if he's good to go, you start him. And I have more questions to answer here in just a few moments, but I want you guys to be hip to the number one daily fantasy sports app in America. I'm talking about prize picks, baby. I play this every single game day. Here's why you guys should, too. Go on ahead. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use promo code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. Or go on ahead and download the app and still use promo code CLNS. When you get there, just go on ahead and pick between two to six players and just pick more or less on a player's projected stats and you can win up to 100 times your money. You guys can go on ahead and make your prize picks right now for Sunday's game against the Dallas Mavericks. I do have Chris Stas Porzingis popping off once more, more than 15 points. Kyrie Irving, less than two and a half, three-pointers made, and Drew Holiday to have more than five assists. Plus, you guys can always have promotions with prize picks. You got Taco Tuesday, Flex Friday as well, and several different Discounts for players and their projected stats on every single game. Go on ahead, go to download the app, Prize Picks, and use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. One more time, go to Prize Picks, use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. I promise it's that easy. Corey Childs coming in. Can Jason Tatum play better in Game 2 than he played in Game 1? Absolutely he can play better than he did in Game 1. But you have to realize is that Tatum, who said this himself, I do not have to score 35 points a night to be great. He does so much off ball that helps the Celtics win. They decided to double-team Jason Tatum in Game 1, and that was a stupid, stupid decision. Because this is not, you can't play strong side defense like the Mavericks, Mavericks do. The Celtics offense is too deep to continue to do that. So when I was talking to Spinny last night, I'm like, think of it this way. Jason Tatum is the conductor for the train. He is what gets him from point A to point B. The Celtics may damn near be in the negatives, the minus, when Tatum is not on the court. In facilitating, in drawing in defenders, because you also can't leave Tatum wide open, in rebounding, I think Jason Tatum is the glue that holds together the Celtics. And I do think he can do more in game two. And I'm excited to see what his plan is and what his play will look like on Sunday. Nick Howardson coming in with a $20 super chat. Last night, the Celtics defense was as elite as I've ever seen. Do you think the Celtics defense could be even more stifling in game two? Even more? It would take everything. It would take everything in them because it did look damn near perfect in game one. Do I think they could be just as good? Absolutely. But I do agree that it's going to be, this is what Jalen Brown said, he says every single game is different. It's going to be a different challenge on Sunday, especially with a coach like Jason Kidd. He's not going to allow that to happen again. So I will need the Celtics to be just as dominant. Absolutely. Can they do better than they did in game one? If they do, I mean... I don't know who's stopping them. But I do think their Celtics defense was elite. And I am very excited to see what else they have here. And I think their transition defense needs to get better. But I think that their rim protection was excellent. Their blocking was excellent. The steals were fantastic. Locking up Kyrie Irving every time he dribbled inside the paint was beautiful. I think the defense was there. Even Drew Holiday said, man, the white guys can even guard. And talking about Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard, I mean, we're deep, man, when it comes to defense. That's what happens when you have two all-defensive players on your front, you're on your backcourt for the Celtics here. So I'm expecting a lot more. Nav, man, I think there's a very good chance JB may win finals MVP with the obvious chip he has on his shoulder. What you think? I love this. I love, 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 love this question because my boyfriend and I were actually having a couple of beers last night after the game, you know, celebrating a great win. And... Uh, we're talking, I'm like, I think it has to be Jalen Brown. But when you, it, it's two very different conversations here because you're probably looking at Tatum and Brown to be the finals MVP if they win. You got to get the job done first. But with Tatum, you're looking at an all-around better player. But with Brown, you're looking at a 
better player for that series. So it's going to be very tough. I think they have two different categories here. They're just in two different type of playing styles to be looked at. But I don't vote. But if I did, uh, just based on game one, yeah, it would be Jalen Brown. No, Ruben, are you worried at all about the Mavericks making it a eight-point game? Yeah, I am. Not so much for the Mavericks part of it all, but for the Celtics. Because Smitty and I have watched this. We, 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 have, we have watched every single ball game this season. And we knew this coming into the third quarter last night was that, for love of God, just keep your lead, man. Just just don't, don't make it harder on yourself. And then what do they do? They allow the Mavericks to cut it with an eight. So I do think that scares the hell out of me because things aren't changing. I'm not understanding why the Celtics can't seem to start off the third quarter on the right foot. And thankfully, the Celtics had a 20-point lead heading into the third quarter, so they could waver their lead just a little bit. But it, I, it worries me. It, I don't know how to change it. I'm not Joe Missoula. I don't know what to fix because this has been a problem all year long. But I'm tired of it. And if, they're, if their motto and, and their reasoning for it is just to breathe through it and know that you can, you can come out on top, then if that works, it works. But that was uh, it worried me. And I'll tell you what, man, it worried me even more because Gafford started to get a little bit of a run. P.J. Washington started to get a little bit of confidence. And he got pissed off, too. And then Luka started draining everything from downtown. So if you let their resources get hot, it's going to be a tough ball game. Oh, who's this? Does Tatum need – bless you. Does Tatum need to be the number one in game two? No. He can be the decoy number one. He can keep being the number one that has to drive down low and pull in those two defenders and those double teams. I'll take that. I'll be the, be the decoy number one. I do not care if Tatum is the leading scorer. I don't because he averages a double-double, and there's a reason for that. He has so many roles on this Celtics offense and defense that, no, he may not be able to produce the numbers like a Luka may do every single night. But look at it. It's Luka and Kyrie. That's it. When you look at the Celtics, it's Jalen Brown. It's Tatum. It's Porzingis. It's Holiday. It's Derek White. I told Smitty last night, while Jalen Brown may have led the Celtics in scoring on Thursday, Tatum can do it in game two. Derek White can do it in game three. Porzingis can do it in game four. Holiday can do it in game five. And we can keep going on and on. That's how stacked they are. So, no, I do not need... I don't need Jason Tatum to be number one, not even for his ego. I just need him to do the role that he is there to do to help the Celtics be number one. Last question here for you guys. Thank you for all your questions you had to say. Uh, are you worried about the Mavericks in game two? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a much different game. Let me know what you guys think down below. Go on ahead and give me a follow on Twitter as well if you guys have not already at AR Barefoot. I did just reach over a thousand followers on last night's stream, excuse me, two nights ago stream. So thank you guys very, very much for all of your support. But go on ahead and hit me up on X at AR Barefoot.